Okay, better better Nate than lover. Um, okay. Um, okay. So let me rehearse what uh, what I've done here. Um, uh, so uh, I went and I added them all called food environment. Its time scale is days. Um, I then went and I added two classes um, through new uh, agent type. I added a convenience store and I made its icon uh, a retail store from here uh, from the from the this palette um, and and then I added a home as well, although I did that one first. I added a home, and the home, I also, from the palette, I used a, um, a house. And in both cases, I frobbed them so that they were a little bit smaller than normal, okay? Um, now, uh, and now begins the, um, and that's, that's all I've done in substance, um, now begins the real heavy lifting. So the TAs uh, shall be prepared. Okay, so I went to the space markup area of the palette. Here we go. Um, and, uh, and I'd like to drag in a GIS map from here to the palette. Now these next little bits are going to be delicate. And I'd like you to be very careful about how you manipulate this. Uh, in response to, to instruction. We're gonna go in a very step-by-step -step fashion. For many things, you can kind of rush on ahead, but I'd ask for these that you stay in sync with people, because they are a little bit finicky, and they differ a little bit by, by um, Mac versus PC, and by AnyLogic 7.2 versus 7.1.2. And so you're gonna wanna stay in sync for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Dylan. Because we're going to be using GIS features, and because the those yeah. require um, downloading maps and routes and stuff like that from uh, various servers, if you could all go online for just 30 seconds and make sure that you're actually logged in to the good. wireless Excellent. network, that would be super good. I'm indebted to you, Dylan. Thank you. Um, so the point here is that um, this whole session, from now till its conclusion, um, will depend quite heavily on GIS databases. These GIS databases are not located on each of your computers. They are located on servers elsewhere. And if you were to employ these for your own use, they could be located on servers in your own organization. But in order to move people around, it needs to get routing information from these servers. And so you will want a good connection. The, and so if you could just go call up a browser and make sure that you can go to your favorite home institution site, make sure you're online, then we'll be in good shape, I think. Yeah, and I'll make one extra note there. Um, you don't necessarily need to set up a server within your own organization. There are ways just to download uh, the maps and the routes and the buildings, uh, whatever map files you want for the areas you can download. And basically put them in the same folder as your model. Um, that allows things to run phenomenally quicker because it doesn't have to do any kind of internet communication. Um, but for the purposes of this exercise, it's just simplest for us to be directly communicating with any logic or whatever other server is out there. So as long as you can get online, that's perfect. And uh, if you haven't gotten a password yet, uh, let me know and I can try and set something up for you. Yeah. In fact, uh, Masa here will probably need a password. Okay. So, uh, first went to this need. I'm going to go check if I'm online um, because it would be most inopportune if uh, if um, there were difficulties with my network connection, which thereby afflicted others. Um, okay. So. Uh, we're just checking network connectivity here, um, making sure that uh, we're online with a uh, browser, okay? And uh, I appear to be online, um, and uh, here I am uh, with Australian Google, and I can go check out, I um, won't uh, we'll do news, usas.ca, um, here we are, okay. Um, yeah, so there's my home institution, great. Um, okay, so uh, help needed? Yeah, I seem to be having trouble getting online. Excellent. Thank you for identifying that. Uh, Annie? 
Could you help? Okay, so we're going to pause uh, the video. With everyone uh, having verified their internet connectivity, what we're going to do now is we are going to go through these critical steps. Um, so first, I'd like you to drag a GIS map onto main here. So again, we're, we're in main, and I'd like you to go over to that markup, that space markup um, palette, and go drag a GIS map into main, just like this. Ready? And I'm just dropping it there, okay? Now, you notice that when you're putting that, that you, you put that in there, um, there's kind of a, a you know, default image that's put in there, okay? This map area, however, will increasingly be focused on a particular locale uh, to which, to which Melbourne. And uh, we're going to increasingly see data from GIS databases provided. So to the first step on that, I'd like you to double click on this map. And I think on Max, that's option click or something, or, or two finger click. Or I, think you, I mean, if you're just clicking into it, you just double click. Double click. Okay. Double click. Okay, thank you. That, that's helpful. Okay, now, having double clicked, you should see something on the upper left, um, um, the upper left uh, up here. Um, okay, um, and in that area to the upper left, um, uh, I would like you to go and um, uh, go click within that area, okay? Just click in that area. And you'll notice, for, for PCs at least, um, there's a choice when you click here between point and region, okay? Um, and you are going to select, in this case, region. Now for maps, um, it seemed that there was some issue let you, you do option click and then you click back into it or, or you do right click on it or? Well, uh, for, for anyone who's on a Mac and you don't see that option between point and region, just uh, let me know and we'll come fuss with it a bit. But it actually looks like everybody's having uh, an okay time with that. Do, do you see that? Okay. There may have been some issue with any logic version combined with Max or something that uh, last week we had some people that needed to, to futz with clicking here and then this choice came up. Okay, so everyone sees region? Okay, now the next step I'd like you to type Melbourne in there, okay? Um, so, um, uh, and it's going to be Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, comma, Australia. Okay? Now, having typed that, what, what you're going to do is to click on this little button here for search. Okay? Now, when you search, a new thing will come up, but we'll see that. So I'm going to press on that. And you'll notice it's searching here. And over here, or in some other window, you should see something that's GIS search results. And you know it's conceivable it'll be sort of next to this and that you'll have to go click on that. Now, you have to be very careful about how this is being done so we can all stay in sync. Because there's, at least in mine, there's several choices. Now, does everyone see a similar list where Melbourne, Australia is shown. One of the reasons I ask is, um, it, it depends a little bit on the vagaries of how big your screen is. Um, if there's, if you have part of Australia showing, it will, it may find one in one place of Australia and not, basically it tends to preferentially show things that are in the current map. If it can't find anything in this map here that relates to the search query, it will list things outside of that. But if it finds even one thing here, for example, if the Congo, un, in an un, un, um, unusual way, had a thing called Melbourne, 
in it and you just search for Melbourne, it would only show that because it's in the map. But does everyone see something like this? Okay. Uh, anyone uh, want a little bit of help for this? The key one is that we're going to see that one that's Melbourne, Australia. There. Not Melbourne uh, City of Port Phillip, not the City of Melbourne, Mel Melbourne, Australia. So I'd like you to go and click, uh, click on this, okay, actually right click on Melbourne, Australia. And you'll notice that when we right click on it, we have some choices. And I'd like you here to click um, to click the convert to GIS point slash regions. Do you see that? So I'd like you to click on that convert to GIS point slash regions. And it actually changes color here. Do you see that slightly? Okay. Um, so something has been done and we will now explore it. Um, and now this next part is a little bit finicky, but basically, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to double click on the map, and you may have to do this a few times, so that you can move it here. And you notice when you move it to the fair continent of Australia, you will see uh, an area highlighted. Now you may have to do it a few times because Sometimes when I do this, when I click on it, I don't click on it enough and the whole map will move. So I need to double click and then move it. Uh, yes, Dylan? And by moving, double click and then you can right click on the inside and move along like that. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, I'm actually just not right clicking, left oh, click. Single, -clicking. single clicking, yeah, on it. On it. Okay. So I double clicked, but then I'm, I'm just dragging with my normal mouse button, not right click. Okay, <laughs> does, does everyone see that? Who would like TA help to make sure that you can see something like this? Okay, now I asked you to consider bringing mice today, and it is for a reason. And for this next component, the mice will be particularly handy. So here's a mouse, if anyone would like it. Um, there, is, uh, there is a mouse up for loan here, um, and at the moment it is an entangled mouse, but um, but it will be functional. Um, if anyone wants a mouse, you're welcome to have it. There you go. Uh, and, sure. Uh, I guess if anybody else really desperately wants one, I've got uh, kind of a stationary ball mouse back here. A little weird to get used to. It's actually kind of sweet once you get it. Oh, <laughs> yes. And I, I have a wireless mouse, if anyone would like that, too. Would anyone like a wireless mouse? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Here we go. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, just have to remember to get that back by the end of the day. Um, okay. So the next task will require, will, will benefit from that mouse. The next task, we're going to zoom in on the fair city of Melbourne. And as we zoom in, you'll see evidence of this region. So how am I zooming? I'm doing control, uh, or actually just mouse, mouse roll will do it by itself. Okay, there's the Melbourne. And within <coughs> Melbourne, there should be a region selected. Oh, oh. okay. Um, do, do you see this kind of region selected there? <coughs> okay. Um, I would ask you, to to uh, to try to make it most of the uh, the screen, but not going outside of it. So I think something like like that is not bad. Um, so we can we can get the full extent. And I'm not quite sure. I guess maybe this is the city of Melbourne, and this is also within municipal limits. So I'm not quite sure if that the 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 differences uh, here, but um, we're going to be dealing with both both of these. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you, therefore, um, to go um, uh, right. So it's it's nearly uh, clicking the screen. Uh, who needs TA help to make sure you see something like this? 
because this part is critical that you be able to see something like this. Um, okay, now we're going to, to double click on this map until we can see this box again, okay? Um, so if, if you didn't see it, you want to click on it. And now when we click in this box, we're going to instead select point, okay? Do you see that? Point, just like that. Okay, now we are going to search here. And as I said before, and I want to emphasize conceptually what's going on. This is just a, any logic factoid about how it works. If we search for something in this box, it will preferentially search for things in the current map. If it doesn't find any, only then will it list things outside of what's shown. Okay? Yes. Say that, does that mean in the highlighted part of the map or in the entire map? The, 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 I believe it's the whole map surface here. Okay. The, this this region here um, will be uh, of of um, particular interest uh, as as part of being part of the city of Melbourne. But it's going to actually, I believe, it'll search actually this entire region shown. Dylan, can you comment on that? But the question is, when when it confines its list to things which are visible, is it just in this highlighted area, or is it what's visible in the whole sort of uh, currently in this this whole sort of uh, canvas this whole canvas here? Uh, generally, it's I the, the think it's the canvas. whole canvas, yeah. not not the thing that's selected, not so the region. The, the regions are really useful if you want to let's say place certain things within a particular area. So exactly. let's say if in, in Saskatoon, there are some very disadvantaged uh, areas where you know there might be higher rates of poverty, higher rates of uh, social distress, or lower rates of, let's say, uh, you know, availability of fresh fruits and vegetables. Exactly. So when you have some of those regions, you might be able to say, all right, randomly distribute, you know, ten things in this smaller region and a hundred things in this bigger region, or split. Certain cult, you know, certain um, socioeconomic differences in one area versus another, and so regions are really helpful and useful for that. And um, that's the highlighted. That's the highlighted. You, you could do the highlighted. This is the highlighted region, but but when it's showing the search results, it's for the whole campus or the area. Is that yeah. helpful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we're doing here will give you kind of a, an overview of a lot of the different things that you can do. Um, but you know, we may not fully exercise and flex all of those. That's right. I think that's a fair way to, to say. Yeah. That. Now you'll notice, um, Hertz went to the question earlier from Colin, that over here on the right hand side, <coughs> there's some metadata provided related to this map. And you notice, for example, we make use of a certain tile provider um, for, for, I think, the, the, the images shown here. It, it says um, whence will route information come, um, where will we go for, for sort of routing, um, and, uh, and then what sort of, what sort of um, uh, modes of transport do we consider in terms of, of that routing as, as I think the default route? Is it by foot or is it by bike or, or a car? Um, and, and then there's some shapefile information that we can import as well, okay? So um, we're going to be, um, we're not gonna be making use of all those options, but uh, if you wanted to, you could point it to use uh, a server of your choice. And Dylan can comment on that a little bit more at a later on. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like now to, to go up to this with that explanation in hand okay. to search for a convenience store. Okay? Convenience store. Um, and this is a point. It's not a region. It's a point for which we're searching. Okay? And again, it is going to be searching in this canvas area as delineated by this map here. Not simply in the select regions. So having done that, we could type convenience store and do a search here, okay? Now, 
Over here on the right hand side will appear many convenience stores. With some of them, you may enjoy a measure of familiarity. Um, there's a, a preponderance of 7-Elevens, but also things like um, easy convenience, corner convenience, etc. Okay, do you see that? Okay, now, this next step, we're going to do in a way that will allow for um, allow for the use of the different versions that we may have in the room. Some of them more upscale versions like researcher or professional, some versions, the PLE version, which is a free version of any logic. They have different capabilities with respect to how many things that they can show, how many so-called embedded objects, among other things. And last week we ran into the fact that some people were using one version than another, and so we needed to constrain the number of things that we added. So without uh, prejudice, I am going to be constraining the number of items we add here to the first 10, okay? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to select the first 10. How did I do that? Well, there's many ways we can do it. We can select down. I'm <coughs> going to go down to the streets convenience 24 7. Okay? Are we okay with that? Now, yet last week what I did is I first selected all and went to add them, and that was all fine. But then when it came to run the model, it said, oh, there's too many things for me to use for the PLA version. So I'm just selecting the first 10. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to right click on them, okay? And again, we're just doing this together right now. We're gonna right click on it. And we're going to, ladies and gentlemen, go say here, create agents at selected elements. Okay. Yes. So we have different numbers of stores in that. You're saying ten. From yeah. Do you want us to all do ten or the same range that you're doing? Oh, uh, just do ten. Just do ten. Yeah, ten. Okay. Just do ten of them. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay. So you're going to be selecting them. You're going to right, having selected them, you're going to right click on this and do select create agents and you're gonna be selecting convenience store agents. Do you see that? <coughs> right? Let me do that again. So I selected the first 10. I could do it with keys, I could do it with click and then shift click here. I, I could do it one by one by right clicking. I, sorry, by control clicking. And now having selected them, I'm gonna do right click create agents at selected elements, and I'm gonna select convenience store, okay? Convenience store, and now I'm gonna say okay, okay? So I right clicked on them, and I selected create agents at selected elements, I'm choosing convenience store, okay? Here we go. So now it selected those convenience stores. Oh my gosh, okay, I would've, it looks like it's selecting a lot more than 10 of them. Um, okay, um, we may have to do some cleanup. I would have expected it to only do it for the ones I'd selected. Maybe it's doing it for all. Okay, next. We'll come back to it and we'll deal with it another way if it's too many. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to go for a moment to Maine to the right hand side and you'll notice there are convenience stores here. Do you see them? Okay, these, these items on the map, we're just showing these results here, but the actual ones that created were indeed these 10. Do you see that? Okay, now, I would like you to select these, like this, and I'd like you to move them over. You can do so by, by dragging them over with mouse or by pressing the left button. Just move them over, okay? Because we're gonna have a list of convenience stores here and a list of grocery stores. I just wanna line them up. And it's important that they not be confused, that they not be listed one after the other. 
Okay, okay, question, uh, Annie, can, uh, or is that a question for me? Yeah, question for you, Matt. Yeah. Um, which relates to the naming conventions you raised before. Yes. Um, milk bar, for example, is a common name for this type of store in Australia. Ah, a milk bar. Yeah, so what I'm wondering is, are we missing a certain type of store? That's a very good question. By choosing the word convenience, I, I, I'm not sure it's, is that a Google version of searching that word? Or? That, that's that's a good question, Colin. Um, I wondered that myself a little bit about um, the degree to which it carries over, and I'm wondering also if it might be related a little bit to to this um, to this choice of the um, of, of sort of uh, what. Um, what tile provided you provide, or what have you, or the um, the GIS database which is being used? I don't know. There'll be the title tile provider. Um, so, so I, I'd ask Dylan to try to work with you on that question to get a firm answer for it. I think they try to have a standard taxonomy which uses certain terms worldwide for items of a certain sort. Like in Quebec, I think these go by a different name. And, um, and you know, in France, we're gonna go by a different name, right? Um, and I think they have certain taxonomy, so convenience store should find occurrences in France as well. But I think it will depend upon a, a standard for metadata that um, is, is in the GIS realm that I can't speak to with authority. And someone like Dylan could probably research it and find you know, how, how this is labeled and, um, and uh, whether, whether local accommodation is needed. So um, like Dylan, if, if you were searching in France for convenience stores, would you need to use a, um, would you need to use a French term for them? That's actually a really good question. I've never built a model that is France specific, so I wouldn't actually right. know. Yeah, and, and what Colin had mentioned is here in Australia, they go by the name uh, yeah, Milk Bar. I, I definitely heard the discussion, and I've never had to think about it, because like a lot of the models that I've built have generally, when I've done this, have generally been <coughs> in areas where I use, where I know the terms of that area. So actually, I, I honestly don't know off the top of my Question, yes. Yeah. Just in a search function itself, if you type, you've typed in convenience stores the first time around, but if you oh. typed in your bars, would that not come up? That's What's what I'm wondering. And I was thinking about suggesting it. And then add um, as it, without, at the risk of introducing a bit of confusion, I was thinking about trying that and seeing what comes up. But was there another question over there? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, we're using all of this kind of a research. Yes. Yeah. Originally, with more opportunity to be sorting our own check files. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the convenience stores, as we've defined them, yeah, so with we'll some kind access. of uh, right. traceable methodology. Right. For the past five or so years, we've been using this successfully with our own shape files, yeah. and I think I think this really gets to the point that um, you know, for some exploratory work, you might want to work with the standard GIS uh, databases it provides. But really, if if you were very serious about having GIS as a central part of your research program. Chances are that you use certain ESRI databases or what have you to which you'd want to point it and use that, or you directly want to import relevant shape files, and and you could do so. Is my understanding and that that um, you could you could choose accordingly so that um, the information shown would be drawn from those databases rather than from any third-party databases on which you're you know you may have uh, less confidence about their local relevance. So that's good. Yes, if for you search for Milk Bay, you get one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <coughs> my, uh, my apologies. Um, I guess it's, it's better than bugger all. But, um, <laughs> but it's, a, uh, it's, it's not a, a great testament to its, its local adaptation. Yes, Dylan. Uh, so uh, it is always good to keep in mind that you don't have to rely on the search functionality to get anything working. Um, if you know where the stores you care about are and you want to be really, really realistic about how your model is operating, um, you can just load a file and go one by one and say, there is a new convenience store here. It has these particular properties, this particular level of staffing. Okay, next one. It's located over this location. It has this name. It has this number of people. So. 
for the purpose of an exercise um, or a demonstration, the search box is fine for our purposes. But if you want a specific model, uh, there are far more sophisticated ways that you can. And you can read it from a database yeah, exactly. of, of your own or, or an Esri database or what have you. And yes. As person. it happens, if you search on convenience store, you do find this particular store amongst the lot of phones. Okay. So the, so the milk bar is classed as a convenience store, but searching for the milk bars yields um, <coughs> yield a, a, a smaller set. One specific one, which is actually called milk bar. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Um, yes. When you when, when you basically uh, uh, assign oh, yeah. each of the to those, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it automatically named each of them according to the Correct. name. Now, in the scenario where, for example, you wanted just to have a a, a human being happen to live at or be located at those places, mm -hmm. um, you might want them named by the name of the human being. Uh, so. Right. Uh, e e do you, is it the step just to basically amend what they've automatically named, or can you do something to ensure that they're not automatically renamed when you create them? What's the best way to go about it? Um, that's a good question. Um, so, so the way we're doing it is very useful for demonstration of the functionality, but it wouldn't be the way that if I were building a production model for use as a part of a, of a research team, um, I, I wouldn't go about doing it this way. What I would do is probably have a database um, uh, that would be my own or, or a database from a, um, you know, from a, a GIS uh, uh, a vendor who specializes in my particular area. And I would read them in there and I would do what's called uh, dynamically create these agents. And what this would mean is that I would have a just like we've had over the past bunch of days, uh, a, a population of agents, I would just add them into that population while reading them from the database. What we have here is, is you know, it's, it's, it's decent for demonstration, but it actually created separate agents, each called this, um, ahead of time. It, it actually defines it as part of the model. And, you know, that's, that's clunky if you have a dynamic situation where you know every six months or three months you're getting updates on uh, from some vendor on the local GIS situation or where you have a database where you want to name them in a very particular way so this is this is kind of a, a poor man's version as it were of what you'd really want to do and what you do is, is actually considerably more general and would have much more flexibility in terms of kind of naming them appropriately. Yeah, and basically if you read from the database, you just have GIS coordinates. You read associated with GIS, and they might have a, a parameter in each agent called name, and you, you give them an appropriate name, et cetera, and you might name it after a person who's there, or what have you. Yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, so great, great questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to now double click, and with Chris having um, uh, disabused us of the uh, of the notion of um, uh, that there are uh, milk large numbers of milk bars uh, within the context of uh, their databases. We will now go on to um, uh, to the next uh, to the next one. Okay, actually, I'm sorry, I said double click there. But first, we have a task to undertake. So I'd like you to right click here on GIS food environment and I'd like to add in a new agent type and this agent type will be called grocery store okay grocery store Gro oop. gross or, or do you want to call it supermarket would that be better yeah. supermarket okay supermarket and we'll just say finish here okay supermarket okay now the supermarket will also have a have a, um, a depiction um, as secured through this pictures area and that supermarket will be depicted as a uh, warehouse and as before we will try to make that smaller so it doesn't dominate our visual views okay so here it's a, we, we, we went, we created a new agent. How did I do that? I created a new agent, new agent type 
I called it supermarket. I opened it up and I went to palette and I dragged in, I went to the, the, the pictures area palette and I dragged in, ladies and gentlemen, warehouse here and I shrunk it down to be smaller. Are we okay with that? Okay, now, having done that, what do you think we're gonna do next? <laughs> Well, we're going to go back to Maine and we're going to search for grocery stores um, to, or supermarkets, I should say. Okay. Um, okay, great. Um, so, um, uh, so now I'd like you to double click on this map uh, as, as, oh, as necessary for it to be. Okay, here, click here. Make sure it's point, and I'd like you to click, and I'd like you to search for supermarket. Okay? Supermarket. Okay, who needs help? Double click here, and, and, and open it up. Supermarket. Okay? Having done that, I would like you to press this. And you should see a, a uh, broad set of supermarkets shown. Do you see that? Okay, who needs help? Dylan stands ready. Okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as before, I'd like you to select the first 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Um, as a heavy R user, I was uh, very happy to see that you have an R supermarket here. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting some packages from there. Um, uh, but, uh, but I'd like you to, I actually made my acquaintance with some of these uh, while I was here. I have a picture somewhere of the Chin Fong supermarket. Um, uh, I'd like you to right click here and again, do create agents at selected elements. And which agents are we going to create now? Supermarkets. Okay. Okay. So now you'll see here we have a set of supermarkets which have been created within the model. So here's our here are our supermarkets, which include several crowns um, as well as as others okay do you see that okay notice that we move because we move this over we have two nicely separated lists otherwise we're just appended you know it would have been confusing we would have been confusing supermarkets with grocery stores with convenience stores okay okay please let me know are, are, is everyone in sync with this because for the moment, we are done with needing to futz with the GIS map and so on. And <clears throat> we're, we're now gonna sort of resume our, our, our sort of work for it. We're gonna probably come back to the GIS map for parks later, okay? To add some parks in, but, but right now, we're, 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 um, we're, we're, we're through, through our, our components of this. So ladies and gentlemen, you can close these GIS search results. And, and now we can focus on these items here, okay? Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to go, and this, is, this, this point will require a bit of attention, okay? I would like you to go and select these items here, select this, the convenience stores, which should be separated from the others, and I would like you to right click and do create collection. How did I do that? I went over in Maine, we have these two parallel lists. These are convenience stores, these are, Dylan? Do you need the Dylan? Any? any? No. You, you don't need to. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So so you can uh, select these and right click and do create collection. 
And the collection here, ladies and gentlemen, will be called super, or be called convenience store, uh, convenience store co collection, convenience store collection. Okay. So it's gonna, it's gonna sort of be a, a nice little group of them, collection of them. You could see them here. Next. I would like to do the same thing for the grocery stores, the supermarkets. To wit, I would like you to select them. I would like you to right click and do create collection. And, and I can say grocery store collection. Oh, collection. Sorry, I should have called it collection. Oh, super, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait. Supermarket, supermarket collection. Yeah. Supermarket collection. This consists of, of certain supermarkets, okay? Now, you may wonder, why am I doing this? Why did I truncate it to 10? Well, it turns out the so-called personal learning edition of any logic, um, it, um, because it creates individual agents, individual ones of these for each, it can only support up to 25. If these were only added in a population, then we wouldn't have to worry about this limit. But it's, it's a silly little thing, but um, that's why we're only confining ourselves to 10. Um, if, if you're using other versions of any logic, um, you can do it more readily. If you're adding them into a population, you can do it more readily. So we have two collections, supermarket collection, convenience store collection. Do people have that? Okay, okay, we're cooking with gas. We're in great shape though. We're, we're past some of the, uh, the most uh, demanding parts. Okay, um, excellent. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, now, <clears throat> right. Um, now, um, I would like you to go to Maine and drag in to Maine home. This is familiar territory from yesterday. Drag in home and call it homes. And what sort of thing do you think this will be? A, ladies and gentlemen, a population of agents, okay? Uh, population of agents. Um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like you to set there to be 100 homes, okay? 100 homes. Again, we could create a parameter for it because we have a lot to do in this exercise. I'm not going to be quite as picky as I'd like to be about that, but it, good practice, create a parameter. You can change it between experiments, etc. Okay, now I would like you to do something quite careful here. Okay, and specifically for this, for this population, I would like you to look, and there should be a thing that says initial location. You see that, Dylan? And I'll point out that initial location will look a little different between 7.1 and 7.2. Thank you. So 7.2 might have four options there. Um, they, I am going to assume they did that to make it a little easier to clarify between a point and a latitude longitude. Right. It all works the same under the hood. I think they just wanted to make it clearer. Yeah. Tell me, Dylan. Um, could we um, very easily confine here these homes to lie within the region? Uh, yeah, it's, oh, I think you can just say in the node, honestly. You could just say the node and you could say, give the name of that region. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just go to in the node there, yeah. you can actually just select it. Right select yeah, Melbourne. Yeah. Okay, and you think it'll, it'll scatter them randomly there. That's what I was, no, no, that, that's, that's the question. That's Ain't the it? interesting bit. So different versions do that slightly. Okay, let's, let's try that. Because if it worked across all versions, it would be sweet. Yeah. If, if it doesn't, we'll go fall back to the other way I was going to do it, which is, is adequate. Okay, let's, let's run this model. Okay, can we run it? And let's see. because. Because any logics GIS is a point of current focus for their development. Um, 
this has been a big point of change for the version 7 time frame and they've changed things a little bit between 7.1.2 which I'm using and 7.2 which some of you are using okay so here we have a set of homes scattered within the context of Melbourne City uh, or Mel the Melbourne region do you folks see that Okay, what do you see? Just my homes are much more scattered. Uh, I think. I have a, a clump of homes in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so 7.2 okay. so okay. so. is uh, 7.2, their default behavior is put it in the center of the node. Yeah. yeah. And then, so what that means is, you know, at the beginning of the simulation, we can say, you know, jump to a random place within that node. Um, but. Yeah, so I, I guess it, what, we'll just go with the default option we're going to provide name. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if it worked fine uh, in the note, you, you could do it. But if, if, if it's given you trouble, if they're all atop each other uh, or otherwise uh, scattered, well, if, you can, if they're scattered all around, that's also okay. But I'm going to give you a, a formula you can use here. So we will put them in the specified point here. Don't have any in the specified point. Okay, do you have latitude, longitude? latitude longitude? Yeah, you'll want to do with latitude, longitude then. And that's a version difference, okay? Okay, latitude, longitude. For latitude, I'd like to use the following. Unif a draw from a uniform distribution. Uniform between minus 37.75 and minus 37.85 and for latitude I would like you to do it between the following elements of, lati of longitude 144.9 and 145.0 okay now again if they appeared fine don't worry about it but I'm going to do this for those um, for whom there's uh, um, there was a, a, a pathology. Yeah. No, Dylan. Um, could you have said the name of the region dot you know random point within? Yeah. yeah. So so the tricky bit about that is you can say that, um, but what it's what it does is then you have to say you know dot get x dot get y or dot get latitude dot yeah. get longitude so it can be inconsistent. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then again, yeah. in this particular situation, it, okay, that actually does kind of matter a little bit. It, so it does come in, in startup of main, you can very consistently. Yeah, say that. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, like anything yeah. in Java, there's a whole bunch of ways to say a yeah. similar thing, and yeah. uh, any logic is not exactly. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to run this now, and we should see something like this. Do you see something like that, yeah. roughly? Yeah. Okay. And for those for whom it worked fine and had these scattered in here, that's also fine. I mean, that could be predicted. Yeah. Colin. Presumably because the precision of the latitude and longitude variables are exactly precise and ignore water, that explains why some of the houses are in the bay. Yeah. Ind indeed. Um, <laughs> indeed. Um, what, yes, um, they're not merely houseboats or, or um, there's one where they appeared in the middle of a, of a park, and a, a lake and a park where it could have been a tea house, but um, it was, uh, um, but yeah, these, uh, because I just put in a draw from a random, a uniform distribution, we have some um, unphysical characterizations here. We could tune that a little bit. Um, you know, I think if we made the longitude go to, to 144.92, then we would probably have a lower bound of this. Do you want to do that? Shall we move, remove them from the water? Okay, okay, let's, let's do that. Um, uh, okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, homes, let's make the minimum no longer 144.92. For those who have entered this, I'm sorry, 0.9, 0.91 should be enough. Minus, so 144.91 is the, oh sorry, wait, this is latitude, sorry, what am I saying? I, 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 I misspeak. This should be rather point, let's say 777, right? Um, it's the latitude, not the longitude we're dealing with. Longitude is fine. Latitude, we moved, I moved it from minus 75 to minus, uh, oh wait, sorry, sorry. 
sorry, I'm, I'm in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> okay, um, this needs to go to uh, point 0.8 minus, okay, this is what I have for the latitude. I didn't change the longitude, this is what I have for the latitude, like that. Okay, um, so so this is the this is the southernmost extent of of Melbourne that we're, we're representing. Okay, uh, this this is the only number I changed, and I changed it from 0.85 to 0.84, I think. So I'd like to run it, and let's now see if we've if, if we've saved these houses from from um, watery. Um, surrounds okay so here we go and we run it and oh oh um uh, <clears throat> uh mumble um okay so uh yeah um let, let, let me just uh just think for a moment um mumble um Missing comma. My gosh. That's really interesting. Okay, so it was subtracting these two and it was placing them at around the equator. <laughs> okay, that would make sense why they weren't visible. They were probably up somewhere near Bali or something like that. Um, okay, so I had a missing, oh my gosh. So I'm sorry, I, I, I've done you a disservice. Um, I didn't even realize they had a single argument form. Actually, sorry, no, this would have been subtract. Okay, so there wasn't, it's not minus minus, it's, yeah, it's, it's minus, so it would have been somewhere, somewhere down in Antarctica, um, perhaps the Ross Ice Shelf or something. Um, uh, there we go, okay. Um, and now, you'll notice as we're displaying this, that this fills in. And now the, the houses, well, okay, this one is still in the Yarra River or something, but, um, but we'll leave that one. Um, it's 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 in the Docklands, perhaps, um, and the rest seem okay. So we'll, we'll leave that. So thank you very much for spotting the missing comma. That was uh, a big big find. Um, okay, okay. So they're neither submerged nor on the Ross Ice Shelf and subject to inhospitable um, uh, food environment. Um, uh, instead, they're they're now snugly within the confines of, of the the Melbourne uh, Melbourne area. You'll notice as we're running, it's loading information in, and that may mean there'll be a bit of a delay when you run it before when you see the map. Okay. Um, uh, I would also note that um, um, th that this uh, map does support a limited amount of zooming, but I'm not sure. Um, if, if it actually refreshes the map at, at fall, smaller um, fall, smaller grain resolutions, you know. So if I left it like this, would it, in the fullness of time, sort of uh, refresh this accordingly with a, with an updated street map that's at, at resolution? Um, I'm not. Uh, Dylan would probably know, but uh, but I can't remember here. Um, okay, so uh, we'll push on here. Um, do you all see that? Or something acceptable? Okay. So who needs any help? Who needs help? Okay. Now, now we're going to get down to to uh, health behaviors. Okay. So we're going to add in finally, at long last, a person. A theory of personhood. And this theory of personhood is going to be rather articulated. Okay. So I would like you to right-click on the model and say new agent type person with a capital P. It's a person. And I would like you to lend this person a representation that is going to be uh, flexible. Okay? Um, this representation... <clears throat> um, right. So I need to... Um, I need to actually make notes on this based on our uh, progress last week. Head, uh, okay, so this representation will consist of two pieces. Um, and the pieces, will, the person's going to have a, uh, a body and they're going to have a uh, head. Okay, um, so I'd like you to click on the person 
double click on the person, and I'd like you to get a palette, and we're going to represent them in a stylized fashion, but a fashion that will suit our purposes of, of illustrating um, obesity outcomes, okay? So I would like you to drag in first, ladies and gentlemen, their head, okay? Now the head is going to be drawn in a, a stylized fashion. Um, uh, and, uh, and I would like, once you drag it in, I would like you to go to the oval and I would like to call it head image, okay? It's the image of their head. And, <clears throat> and the radius of this head image will be but two, okay? So it's going to be two. It's going to be a small image. And many of you may wish to zoom in. You could zoom in using this, um, this element here. Oops. Um, or you could zoom in using the mouse button or mouse wheel. Um, okay. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, next, I would like you to drag in. So this is their head image. And what did I do? I dragged it in head image, and I went down to radius, and I set it to be 2. Are we okay with that? Next, I would like you to drag in a second oval, and this oval is going to actually not be a circle. Hence, in the type, the position and size, I'd like you to change it from an oval to a circle. Just like that, okay? Oval to circle. Now, in, in other words, it won't be a circle, it will be an oval. It, will, it, will, it won't have to be circular. It won't have to have only one radius. In fact, it will have two radius. Notice as, as I change it from a circle, it, circle only has one radius here. An oval, in fact, has two axes. To, to um, I'm drawing a blank on, on what they call those. For, for an ellipse, there's two parameters you can use to specify it, okay? Um, associated with each axis, right? There's kind of a width in one, which on the other. Okay, now, the radius x, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be three. And the radius y is going to be five. And once that you do this, I'd like you to drag it up and dock it just beneath the head. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, let me go and indicate once again what I've done. We're in person. I have dragged in an initial oval, and we have set that oval to be a radius of two. We didn't change any of the other property. Oh, we said it, call it head image. This one here, we then dragged in. We set it to be an oval rather than a circle. The head is a circle. The, this body is an oval. The radius x is three. Um, uh, the radius y um, is, uh, is uh, five. Um, so I'm just taking notes on this as, as three um, uh, radius radius y uh, as as five. Okay, um, and then head the head circle the radius is two. Okay, and I dock them um, next to each other. Okay. Um, uh, place um, next to each other. Now, this is not going to be a, a purely a, um, a fun image for, for no reason. We're going to actually have its, its radius x change with their weight. Okay? So the, the, the heavier their weight, the, 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 the larger will be their girth, as shown with radius x. But that's going to be done programmatically. In other words, that's going to be done um, well, actually, I should say that's going to be done 
through here, we're going to be frothing this to, to tell it to take into account their weight in a little bit. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, having lent them a face upon the world. Now, I would like you to go to Maine, and I would like to add a population, ladies and gentlemen, of people. So, drag in person and call it population. Okay? And the population of agents here will initially be small, okay? Um, uh, but this one will actually set to, um, to uh, use a parameter, and we'll come around to set the homes accordingly. So we're going to add a parameter to main. Remember, parameters in main, we can change the assumptions about them where? In the, begins with E. Experiments, thank you. So there'll be a parameter population size. Now what sort of type is this parameter? What sort of values does it hold? Is it booleans? It's integers, it's integers. It's a count, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so, so it's gonna be an integer. Its default value will be 10, okay? Default value of 10. And the population, does that, <clears throat> having created this, does this, this itself make the population size 10? No. Or no, what do we have to do? The initial number of agents. Well, yeah, we have to set it so that with population, the initial number of agents is given by, by population size. See, this is the same issues we've been going over the last two days. We're just trying to reinforce these, these basic uh, skills and, and knowledge, so population size, okay? You notice this model, I'm going light on the this dot. There's a principle there, I want you to know about this, um, but I, I'm, I'm not gonna actually enforce it. So it's population, I could have written this dot population size, I just wrote population size here. Now, the homes here, we're going to make, for homes, we're going to make it, the initial number of agents, homes will be population size, divided by divided by two. I mean two people per home. Okay? Okay. Great. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've we've got this going on. Now, having done this having done the homes before the population of people here. Okay, question, yes. Yeah, just a quick one. So what happens if uh, homes ends up being uh, like 0.5, something 0.5, will uh, it be rounded or? So that's a good question. So suppose the population size was uh, nine, for example. And initial number of agents here, it will be nine divided by two. Those are integers. Remember I'm asking you to put these point zero for a lot of things? In this case, these are integers. And this is nine divided by two is an integer division. So it will be four. It'll be exactly four. Sorry? If you put divide by 2.0, would it still be four? If I put divided by 2.0, it will be unhappy um, because it will say, look, you gave me a fractional number of agents. What do I do? I need an actual, it needs a count. Here and suddenly you've given it 4.5, and it will be it will be unhappy. So this is one of the comparatively rare cases in any logic where you do require for to, to work with any logic an integer, and and this is integer division here. What you don't want is to use integer division by accident, where you actually want real number division, and because if you have that, and this is why I say if you have like often in in my models. Um, you know, I, I build a lot of empirically grounded models, and in the literature there might be, you know, data that suggests, I don't know, one out of every five people starts, you know, in some initial state. So if I'll put one over five in the model, in a, in a fit of carelessness, it'll actually be zero, which, and I need to put 1.0 divided by 5.0 to be careful. So. Um, so most of the time I do real number division, but here I'm doing integer division. So great question. Uh, any other questions on that?
Who would like a bit of help? Dylan is free. Okay, Dylan. Uh, yes, indeed, indeed. I, I, I see it, but uh, we're we're reaching um, a, a local maxima. Um, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're, we'll we have just one more one more thing to do before you can be freed for to enjoy the food environment. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to go to population. Now, this next step has a bit of subtlety with it, so I'd ask you to follow. We're going to go to the population of people. Remember, our, you don't have to look at this, but our population of homes, remember we specified latitude and longitude for them? We added the population of homes before the population of people, so the homes get all set up before people. Okay, because we, we added them in here first. Those get the first order business and then population. For population of people, I would like to, for the initial location, place the person in the specified point. Okay? And what is this point going to be? This point will be given by their home. Okay? So we need to associate that person with a home. So let's go to person. So we left that for a moment. Let's go to person. Let us go add a parameter to person called home. What will the type of this parameter be? What do you think? A, is it a supermarket? Is it an acceleration? Is it an integer? It's a home. It's a home. It's a home. Okay? It's going to be a home. Each person will have a home. Great. Let's go back to Maine and go to the population. So what did I do here? I went to person. I dragged in parameter. I called it home with a lowercase h. Note that. That parameter should be lowercase. We use it we use lowercase to indicate some particular home. The capital H home indicates all possible homes, homeness, um, and uh, the set of all homes. And so this lowercase H home, H-O-M-E, is drawn from the set of possible homes, capital H-O-M-E. Make sure that's in place. Do you have that in place? Are you ready to go forward? Who needs Delanian help? Nolian excellence. Okay. Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you now to go to Maine. For the population of people, we will now finish the task that we started minutes before. In initial location here, in the four, in the specified point, I would like to type the following, okay? And this will hark back to lessons we learned yesterday. Does anyone remember, what's that special word I use? If, if, in fact, to the very first example, remember we assigned someone an income and that income depended on some other characteristic of them. What was it? Their sex. sex. It was their sex. And so in this, in, in the sort of information for income, I need to refer to someone's to someone's sex. Do you remember that special word I used for it? I said it's only used in two places that you normally have to worry about. And Dylan pointed out, well, actually, there's a place over in discrete event modeling. You actually use it. What was it? Self. self. It was self. So we're going to say here self dot home. We did this also a very similar thing in that model where we have certain person's x location be given by their income. Do you remember that? We use self.income uh, divided by 100 for their x location. So here, latitude will be self.home.get get latitude. Get latitude. Remember, autocomplete is your friend. Use it early, use it often, use it daily. Um, get, get used to making it a habit. And the, TAs, the class, and yourself will all benefit. And longitude will be self.home.get longitude. Okay? Now, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, that was missing from our model yesterday. This is the thing which caused us no shortage of trouble because 
we needed to move people explicitly when they came into that state chart to their home and we needed to reapply the network once they had moved this would have saved us a lot of grief this would have saved us aesthetic dysfunction as well okay so for, we're in the population of people for the initial location in the specified point for latitude we have self dot home dot get latitude and for longitude itself dot home dot get longitude. Do you see that? Okay, are we ready to run it? Should we run it? Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. There we go. And oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, 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 okay. Um, okay, now wait a minute. This is, this is, uh, oh, oh, of course, folks, we forgot. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> well, I just, I'm, I'm giving you a lesson in, in uh, debugging problems. It gave a problem. So let's not, let's not hide that because there's a chance that you may encounter a similar issue at a later point. So let's go see what happens here. So, so let's, let's go see, let's not cover this up. Um, so I'm running this and it's exhibiting um, a slow compilation and we'll run it and it will say null pointer exception. And you notice it, it helpfully says, go look at the console view. And if you go look at the console view, it's actually not visible right now, but we could say, go look at console and it will tell us when it was creating the population, it encountered a problem. This innermost one will give you a good understanding context. And that was actually called from create. So as well as creating the population, when I went and I looked at it, I realized there was a big gap. I hadn't assigned a home. So what do we have to do to assign a home? Does anyone remember yesterday how we did that? We said homes.random. So we have to give them a home. I mean, after all, if they're setting their latitude and longitude based on the home, they need to know what their home is. Otherwise, we're saying, go home, and they say, I don't have a home. No, I don't know what my home is, right? So for their home, we need to give them a home before they can set their location based on it. So I stand before you remiss, and I apologize for dragging you through the mud if that particular error message, but it's an error message with which you may not be perpetually unacquainted. Um, you, you may on occasion that count uh, remember it. Um, and it's a good thing to be able to look into the console and say, where did this occur? To, to look at that very uppermost red line and say, oh, it occurred at this place. And it gives you clues as to what might go on. In this case, the gap was more glaring. It was more, more obvious, it was more manifest. And so I've created it, I have fixed it, okay? So now let's go run this and and uh, then, if fortune favors us, you'll be able to go and enjoy the food environment. Okay, here we go. There we go. And now where are the people? They're all associated each, ladies and gentlemen, with a home. <laughs> this one has a very, fairly unfavorable home. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we've, we've laid the groundwork for our next component, which is going to start adding, uh, start adding some behavior to those individuals in terms of um, in terms of the um, uh, in terms of their dynamics, and uh, particularly in terms of their weight dynamics, and then in terms of their food seeking behaviors. But first, let us now engage in food seeking behavior of our own. The food lies behind you. And you can route yourselves without contacting the AnyLogic servers by by uh, by visual inspection. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll stop this. So.